Welcome to Discover Gluten Freedom. I'm your host, Melinda Tucker, and I'm here with Karen Morgan, author of Blackbird Bakery Gluten Free. Well, Karen, welcome back. You've Thank been, you. You've been on the show before, and we've talked about your great recipes in your cookbook. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of your favorite gluten-free products that you don't make? That's a great question, uh, especially for when I'm traveling and things like that. I love to be able to just have something in my purse that I can grab, and Bumble Bars are some of my favorite little bars that I carry around because uh, they, you know, they give you a lot of energy, and I just love the way they taste. I mean, uh, the the luscious lemon, I think, is one of my favorite ones. Um, but then when it comes to, like, staples to have around the house, I love the Tinkinata brown rice pasta. That's sort of a go-to. Um, Annie's macaroni and cheese for my son because he adores, you know, like any other child, he adores macaroni and cheese, so we always have that around. And, um, I, you know, for if I don't have time to make my own bread, of course, Udi's is sort of the go-to right now. Um, and what else? You know, that's kind of about it. Whenever I eat out, I, we like to go to P.F. Chang's a lot and things. And here in Austin, there's Eddie V's that has a full gluten-free menu. And a lot of the gastropubs here in Austin are very, very aware of the gluten-free revolution. And so... Um, Barley Swine is one of my favorite places to go out to eat for, you know, that special night. Yeah, oh, so. that's exciting. Austin is really rich with, with their gluten-free opportunities. Yeah. And not a lot of people out there that are eating gluten-free have resources like we have down here. It's so true. But um, it, as more comes about, we're, we're getting better products and we're getting more and more offerings in the form of gluten-free menus when we go out. That's right. And so all these are a plus and a benefit to us. Absolutely, and I think that that's something that makes the gluten-free community so strong is that the more that we band together, we're just going to increase the, the quality and the standards of the gluten-free market because we keep demanding for better quality, then they're going to be forced to do something about it, which is so fabulous because as we touched on before, when we were first diagnosed, the available products were abominable. Yes, absolutely terrible. Horrible. Uh, so they've made great strides, but you know, uh, it's still a long way to go, I think. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Food stop that I am. <laughs> well, Karen, we're here in the wine department, which is always one of my favorite places to be when Me I go too. shopping. <laughs> do, you, do you cook with wine much? Absolutely. It's, um, you know, it's the foundation for most sauces. But in baking, uh, ironically, it makes some of the best tart doughs that you could possibly imagine. You know, you substitute um, a little bit of the butter for some rosé or white wine, and it just get, adds this little bite that can't be replaced by anything else. So I like to put it in, in there, in, uh, in the tart doughs, of course. And then, of course, you can do, you know, refined spirits to flavor your cakes or your custards or anything else. So it, it adds a little sparkle to a little baking. Oh, those are great hints. I yeah. agree. So it's really nice. So Karen, you mm -hmm. also have a project you mentioned before. Yes. Tell us about this in your TV you. I'm, I'm so excited because this happened so last minute, but um, we're sitting here at Whole Foods and Whole Foods started a new network called Thrive. And I was um, had the great honor of being chosen as the gluten-free chef for the show and it's called Gluten Morgan. And it's all about making gluten-free fun, sassy, and super easy so and because I think you know when you can have fun and it's gluten free then you really have found a, a bit of joy in your life again well that's so good to hear how many episodes will you be doing when when will they be on they did six and it, this was these are just basically pilots it's just to sort of get the message out there and say this is kind of what we're trying to do and um, it's you know they they're doing one a month and so they've done they've aired one episode and then the next one's in August 22nd so, Wonderful. Well, I'll be, be looking excited. forward to it. I saw your first one, and it was great, and it was uh, very exciting, and it was. It was casual. It took a lot of the intimidation factor out of it with, uh, of course, you're just a lovely person and fun oh, to talk to, so and so you're telling us how to pick an easy product and yeah. a, an easy recipe, and it's just a relief to not have someone that's scary and intimidating, Ooh, trying right. to teach you to do something that's already scary and intimidating for a lot of people. Right, exactly. And I think that's the key is just sort of let go of all those preconceived notions about what gluten-free is and, you know, reinvent it for yourself. And that's what I am so proud of in my book is that 
a lot of these recipes are foundation pieces, so you can take them and turn them into whatever you want at the end of the day. I mean, you know, you have a basic layer cake and you can ice it any way you want. You can decorate it any way you want. Or, you know, cookies, you can package them up and give them as gifts. Or, you know, you can use the base of those recipes and create whatever you want. So that's a good thing. That's good. <laughs> Karen, do you have any other cookbooks in, in your oven? Yes, I do, actually. I'm working on savories now because, you know, my sweet tooth got satiated with the first book. <laughs> but no, it's more about building on the foundation that I built with, you know, the sweets and the pastries. Now let's do, you know, flatbreads, pizzas, uh, sandwich breads, ciabatta, uh, focaccia, uh, pita, all of the other things that sort of round out what makes a full baking pantry. That sounds really good. So it will still be baking oriented, uh -huh. uh, but more on the savory side. Yes. And after that, where, where do you see yourself? I don't know. I mean, I really, I've fallen in love with educating and connecting with people so much that I really just want to make that a lifelong endeavor and just continue to encourage people to find the confidence again after their diagnosis because, you know, it's like once you're told, it's that crestfallen feeling. Well, you know, I've spent the last 10 years of my life dedicating myself to eliminating that feeling for people. And so I, it's my hope to just be able to keep connecting with people and encouraging them to, you know, remember what it's like to have a really pleasurable, joyful eating experience every time you sit down. Well, I hope Karen's recipes and cookbooks and her show on the Thrive Network help you to discover your gluten freedom. Thanks for watching.